In this episode, I backpack to a mountain village near the China-Myanmar border. There, I homestay with an ethnic Lisu family, getting a glimpse into their everyday lives, from picking bamboo shoots to birthday shenanigans. to be out and about here in this tropical weather and we're going to a place called Yingjiang which is on the border of China and Burma officially known as Myanmar. Now it's not the easiest place to get to from Beijing you have to pop into a plane and transfer at Kunming which is the provincial capital of Yunnan province. Now from Kunming you have to get here to Tung Chong and that still is not our final destination. We still have an 80 kilometer ride from here and what you can do is to pop into a cab or rent a car. But I'm going to get into this cab and we're going to head southwest from here. I know I'm not looking my best, you know, it's been a bit of a long transit, but I'm super excited about this travel log journey. My name's Dewey, join me. <laughs> Yingjiang County is located on the western fringes of Yunnan, a province celebrated for its patchwork of cultures. Yingjiang comes under the administration of De Hong, Dai and Jingpo Autonomous Prefecture, the Dai and Jingpo people being its two main ethnic minorities. But we're venturing into the lands of the lesser known Li Su tribe. As the city dissolves into dense green mountains and paddy fields, and walking becomes a key form of transport, I forget about my sore behind. And soon we switch vehicles to one with a driver familiar with the snaking roads. We're heading into Xiamen Pia village, and when we arrive at its gates, I'm greeted by a cordial chap, the local chief. Yu Da Ge, Ni Hao. Zhong Yin, Lai Dao, Ni Wen, Tun Zi La. Hahaha. 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 家里面都是摆的都是小碗啊这里是竖在我们这个大门口啊是表示戒指上出入平安啊是这样的那我也看见了很多那个羊头是啊这个羊头是我们隶属族很多传统就跟羊有关嗯所以我们就把羊头挂
你们有孩子吗？有的。现在小女孩都是你的孩子。对，我,我弟弟有三，呃，呃，三个，我有三个，三个两个都有三个，对，所以六个小孩。对，生六个小孩、啊。我们这个家庭现在有呃十二个。Hello， 你好。还有他们吗？你好，奶奶。他妈妈了。啊，他妈妈。汉话，汉话不会讲。嗯。少数民族汉话不会讲。哦。嗯、我的汉话也不是很好。嗯、还可以，还可以。还可以。哎，那么，那把它过三个介绍多了。Oh my gosh. This is awesome. 这这是双胞胎。啊。这是我弟弟的，这是双胞胎。啊。双胞胎，我们。最近这两天找一个比较适、哦、呃适适合的这个日子，啊、哦，呃，给这个两位老人做一个，父母哎，两位父母做一个祝寿，嗯、哦，是这样的。OK， that's cool. So hopefully I'll be able to catch this celebration, um, of this grandma and grandpa. It's like a, I guess, wishing them good health in the future because they're getting to quite an old age now. So together, it's like the whole village comes. You know, and gets involved, and I guess blesses them with longevity. So, yeah. <laughs> the Lisu people are believed to have migrated from Yunnan from eastern Tibet thousands of years ago. Today, China's Lisu population is estimated to be around 730,000. Besides southwest China, the Lisu also inhabit mountainous regions of Myanmar, Thailand, and the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh. Here in Yingjiang, I'm captivated by the raw and simple beauty of their everyday lives, their intrinsic, symbiotic interaction with nature, and their embrace of what little they have. It's an aura, an attitude that many of us city dwellers have lost over time. Something preserved most discernibly in the Lisu children. Ah, check it out! But um. <laughs> I think they're learning one of their uh, little ethnic minority dances, and they're watching it on TV. And from what I can see, there are some little words as well in in letters that are flipped upside down, English letters. And that's one of the languages, or one of the the way that they write the language on the little people. Huh? <laughs> ah, here we go. The rotten one. <laughs> Rhythms and steps are somewhat harder than the macarena, so I give up and just watch them stomp away. I bet they're actually unaware that they're playing a key role in safeguarding their cultural heritage, with their breathless concentration, their muddy feet, and matted hair. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and of course, their smiles. As the sky erodes into darkness over Yingjiang, I find myself back at the Dongs. It's pleasantly surreal sitting in my PJs with the family in the dim living room, mesmerized by the fire and the intoxicating twang of the stringed instrument. What a perfect way to end the day! You know, it took a while to get here. It's not the easiest place to travel to, but I'm pretty sure that the next few days is going to be pretty amazing. You know, I feel like it's it's already so great. You know, just chilling here, ending the night this way. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's it's such a privilege to be able to spend time with the Lisu tribe and see how they live their everyday lives. You know, tomorrow I think they're going to take me um, to try and harvest some <laughs> bamboo shoots. We'll see how that goes and show me how they mill buckwheat and rice as well. And oh yeah, the main the main thing that I'm super excited about is this upcoming birthday celebration of the elders,、uh, the the grandma and grandpa of these little kids.、Um, and yeah, super super keen to see how that goes. No idea what it's going to be about, but 
should be awesome. Coming up next on Travelog, learning the Lisu way, foraging for food in the forest, but first a rather fascinating breakfast. In this episode, I backpack to a mountain village near the China-Myanmar border. There, I homestay with an ethnic Lisu family, getting a glimpse into their everyday lives, from picking bamboo shoots to birthday shenanigans. It's a typical morning in Yingjiang Xiamen Pia village. Everyone's up with the sun. And today, I'm going to be helping out with, or more likely getting in the way of, the daily Lisu routine. Rise and shine! So, yeah, I know, I'm one of those annoying uh, morning people. But this is just another day in the Dong household. But for me, I've just spent my first night here with the Lisu family. You know, sleeping on straw mats and waking up to a rooster crowing and fresh mountain air. I feel pretty revitalized. But you know what? I'm ready for some grub. Some brekkie, yeah! Zao? Zao? Hey, Zao. Oh, I haven't seen you yet. You're... I'm the owner of the owner. The owner? Uh, I'm Dong Caihua. Dong Caihua. Hello. Huh? I'm just... I drank that drink. I think it's the same alcoholic drink. Do you drink in the morning? Yes, I drink this. Hmm? Why do you drink this drink? Because in the morning, this can be warm. Oh, oh. Do you drink it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up eating cereal and milk for breakfast every single day, so I enjoy the modest affair, though less so my pungent liquor breath afterwards. Then, it's straight to the chores for everyone. Ooh, giving me a, a basket, <laughs> a smaller one. I don't think they think I'm uh, capable of carrying heavy stuff. <laughs> Off we go. We're heading into the forest to collect some food. At the moment, it's wild bamboo shoot season, so that's what we're looking for. It's a slippery uphill trek, which is okay for now. Ooh. Ish. Taihua tells me the baskets can weigh 40 kilograms when full, so now I'm glad I've got the miniature one. A kilometre or so later, we find what we're looking for. The shoots are then swiftly peeled and the not-so-tender parts removed. <laughs> yep. Yay, my first harvest! Well, I didn't really do that, but I'm carrying it at least. <laughs> it's like they have a bamboo radar. Meanwhile, I'm looking straight past the most obvious ones. Wow. Second harvest. <laughs> I need to spot one myself now. She's pointing at Oh, there they are! Can't believe she was like pointing at them and I still couldn't see them. I need some baby bamboo goggles. <laughs> Yay! One... Two... Yeah. So the Taogo is what we're looking at. It's what they've planted in this wild area. I think it's one of the very few things that they've actually uh, that they actually plant. And everything else is just el natural. Again, I don't know what I'm looking for. A spice of some sort. Ah! Oh, there's no holes that are... Oh, that's so cool! Oh, I can't take it. Can you take it? Turns out what I've plucked is Check black it cardamom so fruit. It's one of the very I've few products that the locals cultivate the and sell. Oh my god, look what he's got here! <laughs> Looks like I could clobber someone over the head with this. 
These bunches are sold like so. Once dried, the seed pods are used to add a smoky flavour to food. Lisu's subsistence has always depended on the mountains. They've generally settled in ecologically fragile regions prone to natural disasters, and yet they've endured while taking the minimum from Mother Nature. Often, the Lisu ladies come by themselves with machetes and baskets and transport the produce home on their heads. Got a hood, see? Well prepared. Uh, Oh, <laughs> that's tough on the neck. Yeah. After a bit of training, I could be an F1 driver. Whoa. Clearly not. I can't imagine doing this to feed my family, having 40 kilograms strapped to my forehead. I mean, figuring out where to find what in supermarket aisles is enough of a headache. And with that, we traipse our way back home, past the creek and the rice mill, and get lunch started. That's so cool. It's like making baked potatoes. So the ones that um, we haven't peeled, this is how they cook it. During bamboo season, I reckon the Lisu people put pandas to shame. They demolish this stuff. Bamboo shoots are a versatile ingredient. Boiled, sliced, mashed, pickled, whatever preparation method is preferred. As long as they're cooked, they're edible. Half an hour later, these babies are ready and waiting to be peeled. Whoa, 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 isn't that hot? Oh, my <laughs> Definitely couldn't do that with my wimpy fingertips. This is what? Yen. Mash it all in with tongue blistering chilies. They don't mind hot to touch or to taste, it seems. Mm, and serve it up in a bowl to be eaten nice. with rice. Mm. <laughs> Can't wait to dig in. <laughs> what do you say? Pretty successful morning, hey? Mmm. Tastes really crunchy, really tender. And also, Really, really spicy. <laughs> so, after the morning harvest, lunch is served. And, like breakfast, it's a pretty unpretentious event. After all, it's just another day in the Dong household. Coming up next, Grandma and Grandpa Dong celebrate their birthday in style. Well, Lisu style. Think colourful costumes, shaman-led rituals, and non-stop singing, dancing and drinking. The roosters are crowing as usual and the mountain air is as fresh as ever. But today, it's not just another day in the Dong household. It's the day that the whole village and I have been waiting for. Grandma and Grandpa Dong's joint. Their handmade costumes are ceremonial outfits worn only on very special occasions. I can tell you, these family heirlooms are probably worth thousands. Mrs. Dong is lending me what used to be the everyday ensemble for Li Su ladies. It's much less practical than the men's, hence they wear it less often. <laughs> Got a bit of an audience as well. <laughs> In ancient times, victorious Li Su warriors would send home pieces of their enemy's flags, which the women sewed together and wore proudly. I'm so colourful, like a rainbow. Alright. Ooh, there's a headdress as well. This is cool. What do you reckon? Suits me? <laughs> Well, the headpiece isn't the most sensible adornment for harvesting bamboo shoots, that's for sure. <laughs> Yay! Now we match! See? Soon enough, helping hands arrive, 
And despite already being dressed in their gaudy, gorgeous garments, it's straight into culinary labour. Of course, it's not all tedious toil. It's a chance to catch up, and it's very much part of the celebrations. Wow, it smells so good in here. <laughs> Feeding dozens and dozens of mouths is not a feat for the feeble, but the atmosphere is far from frantic. It's laid back, Lisu style, and everyone is doing their bit, only in bulk. Meantime, the men have the task of building the shrine. Although Christianity is now the dominant Li Su religion, half of Xiamang Pia village still practice an ancient religion that's part animistic and part ancestor worship, blended with shamanism, sacrifice, and complex local customs. One of these customs involves building a bridge over the creek for the elderly couple, nice. considered a good deed that will bring good luck. A select group of young men are assigned to the gruelling but worthy task. And without warning, amidst pirouettes of incense, the shaman starts chanting and the rituals begin. After the incantations, the shaman ceremony continues. It's a long performance. The villagers watch, sheltering from the sudden downpour. But for Grandma and Grandpa Dong, the show must go on. <laughs> I can't say I've ever seen anything remotely similar to this. It's more than just eye-opening. I feel shivery, both mystified and enlightened at the same time. The smells and sounds are startling, yet soothing. And nothing makes sense, but then it does. Or does it? There's no set schedule for the day. The next thing I know, all the party goers are heading down to the newly built bridge for another Lisu rite. No one is allowed to cross it before Grandma and Grandpa Dong, except those who erected it, and only after the evil spirits are banished. <laughs> Lisu people believe that their ancestors' souls reside in bowls of liquid, and drinking the contents, in this case rice wine, is akin to receiving their blessings. So 
They've got a scene there by going across the bridge and coming back over. They've expelled the bad spirits, the family together, after the, the grandma and the grandpa crossed it first. And it also marks the end of a very successful birthday celebration. But to be honest, it's still not the end yet. We've still got a lot of dancing and singing and also lots of fixing. Oh, and lots of drinking from bowls. And I mean lots. I'd never have imagined I'd be drinking Lisu homebrew while mastering Lisu vocals as a Lisu birthday procession clambers up swampy slopes in the rain. This is the gift giving ceremony now. Woo -hoo! It is really wet. <laughs> Listening carefully, I'm reminded of what Mr. Yu told me when I arrived, that sheep are a symbol of the Lisu. The vibrato in the villagers' voices, the oscillation in tone, is an imitation of a sheep's bleat, and the tap of their steps corresponds to the sound of hooves. I would join in, but right now my hands are full. It's not exactly healthy, which is what the gift should be, but it is a birthday cake, because it is a birthday after all. <laughs> The bowls are relentlessly refilled and the revelry remains in full swing. Was this Lisu adventure in Gingjiang worth a plane and car rides? Unequivocally. May Grandpa and Grandma Dong and all the Dong descendants live beyond a hundred. And just when I'd forgotten I'd been guzzling booze on an empty stomach, the gastronomic outcome of a day in the kitchen, featuring fresh bamboo shoots. The ultimate Lisu banquet. <laughs> what an amazing day it's been. <laughs> 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 